books. Welcome back to my channel. Time for a book review. Kind of self-explanatory, isn't it? But I haven't done one. I haven't done a standalone single book review yet because since I've come back to this channel. So while I'm reading prize long lists and things like that, I, I really wanted to sharpen my skills in doing single book reviews. And that mixes well with all the other stuff you do on BookTube, like TBRs and Friday Reads and you know, readathons and all that sort of stuff. But to do a single book review is a definite skill that I want to get better at, I want to practice. So here we go. And we are talking about the Stella Prize, still. And then I've read two books from the Stella Prize long list so far. And I do apologise, the Stella Prize is not for everybody. It's an Australian-focused prize. And it, not everyone is going to read these books and that's okay if you want to skip through that's okay but in my reading i've read two from the stellar prize long list so far i'm going to do one right now i'll do another one either later today or early tomorrow and we'll publish both of them i don't imagine i'm going to get through everything on the long list it's way too big so as i pull things out that i want to read hopefully a lot of those make it to the, or some of those make it to the short list and then i'll do my best to read all of the short list so, the very first one on the list is Indelible City uh, by Louisa Lim, Dispossession and Defiance in Hong Kong. Now, you might have seen in the title to this video, It's Not You, It's Me. It's exactly how I feel about this book. There is nothing wrong with this book. Before you skip this video or move away and decide not to buy this book, I have no problems with this book. It is beautifully written really wonderfully written, telling a great story in a really wonderful voice, trying to cover a lot of ground of Chinese prehistory right through to today. And she does, Louise Lim does that with great talent. And what I'm, what I'm referring to when it's not you, it's me, is my ongoing relationship to nonfiction. And it really is me. I DNF this book. Uh, I just, I couldn't finish it. Again, I can't stress this enough. It is not because of the quality of the book. It is about my relationship with nonfiction. And my relationship with nonfiction goes like this. You need to work really hard to sustain me. If you think of uh, fiction, if I, I read a three-star fiction read, I'll still finish it. I read a two-star fiction read, I'll still finish it. This is a four- or five-star non-fiction read, and I still DNF'd it. Because to me, and only to me, and I should have realised this going in when I read the back, that it is the type of non-fiction book that generally doesn't sustain me. And it's not a big book. 300 and a bit pages. So what's my problem? For this particular book, it's talking about a historical event and then plate the 2019 uprisings in Hong Kong. And it's placing that event within the entire history of the island of Hong Kong, its people, its relationship to China, its relationship to Britain as its coloniser, and all of the other pre and all of the rest of the prehistory of Hong Kong. It's massive. So my problem with this type of nonfiction is the scale. Because I've read biographies before, uh, I've read uh, history type uh, tellings of events before, but nothing, but where this one is different is it, it, the scale is so large that I end up losing myself in the amount of names, people and places, place names, people names, the amount of complexity in all the history and the dates. Not that I'm ever expected to remember the dates, but the fact that they are there and we are constantly tying this one event, the 2019 uprising, to all of these other events within the history of China and Hong Kong becomes incredibly confusing to me in my little pea brain, which is why I DNF'd it. But... As a story, well told, beautifully told, by a professional journalist and writer, this is great. And I really hope it gets through the shortlist. I can see that it is a very, very high quality book. What I'm saying is it's just not for me. 
and I should realize that going in. So it really is not about you, it's me. So, but let's tell a little bit about the story. And because I DNF'd it, I don't want to spend 20 minutes doing this video, but it is the story of Hong Kong. But the author describes it as being uh, all these competing myths and stories. You have what the British concerned the Hong Kong as this barren rock with no appreciable history and no appreciable uh, worth. And that's why they took it. That's why they decided to just, okay, this is ours now. It was a, and I, I, I can, I can recognize that because I recognize that in my own country, where the British arrived in Australia and declared it as tabula rasa or a blank slate, and then just took it. Didn't matter that there were, uh, that there were indigenous peoples. Didn't matter that there were civilizations and cultures already in place. What they decided was, it's a blank slate, we're gonna take it. And they took a similar approach to Hong Kong. It was called a barren rock. And on top of that, you had hundreds of years of colonization from the English. You also had China, who always thought and always knew that Hong Kong was theirs. But as an island, and as an, a fringe island of theirs, it was hard to hold. They lost it to the Japanese, they'd lost it to the British, they'd had lots of trouble holding on to it, but they always considered Hong Kong its child. So welcoming it back in 1997, when the British handed back Hong Kong, was like a welcoming a child home. So you had that competing history. And then you also had the, the history of the ancestral people, indigenous people to Hong Kong, Hong Kongers, who have this very proud history of managing, living and sustaining themselves on this island, this group, this group of islands called Hong Kong. And within that, because of all these competing traditions around them from white colonizers and the Chinese and everyone else that came along in a boat, they have this very, very sound idea that Hong Kong is their refuge and it's ours, which is great, but it also makes them very rebellious because they're constantly fighting off colonizers and invaders and people who would like to say that this land is theirs when it is not. They are proudly individual, collectively individual, collectively Hong Kongers and nothing else. So the uprising in 2019 is wrapped up in all of this history which is what made it really interesting. And it's such an it is such an engaging read. Um, so when the protest did happen, um, this author had been uh, a journalist in Hong Kong, but she also had this very unique connection because she was not an indigenous Hong Konger. She was um, half Singaporean and half British. And her parents had moved to Hong Kong when she was a very small child and she had spent most of her childhood and young adulthood in Hong Kong. She considered herself a Hong Konger, even though that she was not a descendant from Hong Kongers. But within that, so there was that negativity from traditional Hong Kongers, but her entire family history going back several generations are all tied to Hong Kong. So she has this familial attachment to, to Hong Kong and its history. And her family is tied to some very important events in Hong Kong, um, in, in Hong Kong history, even though they are not from ancestral uh, Hong Kong families. So that mix all together makes for a really very, very engaging story. But <laughs> I still DNF'd it, but it is about me not about the book, not about Louisa Lim, not about this, the story of, of Hong Kong. If this story interests you, and I hope it does because that's why I picked this book up, it really does interest me as a topic. But I also kind of realized in the back of my head when I did pick it up that it's not usually the non-fiction type that sustains me. But I picked it up anyway because it sounded really good. It is, and I don't want my DNF to turn you off picking this up and giving it a crack. It is again, Indelible City, uh, Dispossession and Defiance in Hong Kong by Louisa Lim. It's up for, in the long list for the Stella Prize. It is great. I am not, <laughs> I DNF'd it. All on me. 
If you think this is great, please tell me down below. I would love to hear your thoughts if you have read this or if this topic interests you, please look this up at your local library or buy a copy, it is amazing. Um, that's it. I hope you enjoy this book. Please tell me what you think uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, bye.